Well, hello and welcome back to the channel. I'm absolutely wrapped to see you here once again. And you know, I'm looking today at a lens and this particular lens, I've been waiting to arrive for at least 12 months and it's finally here. This is the Nikon 20 millimeter F 1.8 S, which is the native mount for the Z series of cameras, the Z6, the Z7 and the Z50, which are the three native Z mount lenses, uh, cameras currently available from Nikon. So I've been able to put this lens through at paces. Now, recently I was supposed to be over in New Zealand running a couple of workshops and just having a bit of a break and a holiday and sightseeing and all those other things. Well, that was obviously put on hold because of all the travel restrictions and everything else that's happening in the world. But one blessing in disguise about all of that situation is that my lens arrived. Now, it would have arrived when I was already over there, so I wouldn't have been able to take it with me. So, but what I did have was a bit of an opportunity to test it whilst I was still able to get around and do a bit of traveling. There's fairly heavy travel restrictions and all sorts of things. The same as everywhere around the world at the moment, so you know what I'm talking about there. But luckily, I've been able to test this lens out. And so far, fantastic but you know i want to particularly compare it against this lens which is my favorite from the last probably three to three and a half years i've had this lens which is a nikon 20 millimeter f 1.8 g mount so that fits all of the older dslrs also fits the z6 with the ftz adapter which is one of the things that i'm going to talk about with this discussion today it's not really a lens review as such i don't really do lens reviews what i'm going to do is talk about this lens in a real world situation i'm a nightscape photographer so my use for this lens might be a little bit different to some of you that might want to shoot landscapes and other things i'm positive this would be an absolutely awesome landscape lens um, but i primarily shoot nightscapes and that's what my talk here and discussion and the examples I'm going to show you heaps of pictures uh, is is based around so where do we start well firstly I want to compare these two lenses because this lens I bought to replace this one now the reason you're probably asking me well if you've already got this one why did you buy that one there are a number of reasons now I've got this Z mount system and currently I've got let me see one two three this is my fourth native Z mount lens. I've got the 24 to 70 F4, which is basically the kit lens. I've got the 35 millimeter F 1.8, which is this one. And I've also got the 50 millimeter F 1.8, which is that one. Now, I haven't really done a, a video on each of those lenses yet, even though I've had them longer than this one. I've done a few images with both of these uh, lenses with the Z6, which I'll put up now and you can just have a quick look because that's a preview of some of those to a video that's coming in a week or two. Needless to say, both of those lenses are absolutely excellent and I love them. But my really favorite focal length, as you already know, is this 20 millimeter. So here we are, I'm gonna compare it to the older G mount lens. Now there's a few things that you'll notice firstly, and one of the things that you notice as soon as you get this lens out of the box is how ginormous the lens hood is. Now you can see the difference there. It's, it's about one and, a half, well, one and a quarter times the size of the old G mount lens. Now, a lot of you will say, oh, I don't use a lens hood anyway. Well, I can tell you right now, I use a lens hood on every single lens that I own mainly for two reasons. Now, I, because I'm a nightscape shooter, there are plenty of times when I get out in the nighttime and there's a dew and a mist and a fog and lens fogging is a major issue. So that is the first uh, point of protection for lens fogging, just having a lens hood. It just stops a little bit of that dew settling on the glass, which is underneath. Now, I know it's not a, a, a a total solution and I use lens warmers as I've mentioned to you before for that but it is one of the things now my second reason for having a lens hood on all of my lenses is if something bumps into that lens or if it drops over and hits the ground the first thing that hits the ground is the lens hood now it might break because they're plastic but that is okay I don't mind breaking a lens hood I can just replace those and there's been a couple of occasions where that's been uh, pretty much a close call I've never broken one but I have bumped cameras over I've, uh, winds dropped cameras off tripods all sorts of things um, and so that's another reason why I use a lens hood so that's a really big one I guess just because it's a wider angle it's bigger than all of the other lenses that I've got 
Just comparing just for a moment between these other lenses, you can see the 20 millimeter here up against the 35 millimeter. It's huge. It's a much bigger lens. And it's also bigger, even though I don't have with me the 24 millimeter f1.8 from Nikon, which I tested a couple of months ago. It's a very similar looking lens to that, but it's slightly longer, it's bigger. So that's just something for you to keep in mind if you're talking about lenses. So one of the big advantages with the old F mount was just the, the physical size of it. Now I'm just gonna take it off this adapter for a minute so you can see the difference. Now look at that, it's tiny compared to the new lens. So there's obviously a lot going on inside this, this particular lens body. And I think what's going on is quality. This thing is absolutely awesome. Now, having said that, I reckon this is awesome too. For what you get and the features that this lens has, I think it's absolutely fantastic. One of the things that I loved when I first was introduced to this lens was just how small and light it is. And you can see that here. It's tiny, so it doesn't take up any room in your camera bag. This one obviously takes up more room, but nowhere near as much room as, for example, the Nikon 14 to 24 f2.8, which is a monster of a lens and a lot heavier. Now, I think a fair comparison for this particular video is with the FTZ mounted on this lens. So I'm gonna put it back on. There we go. Now, the first thing you notice when I've got the FTZ mounted is they're almost identical in length. Okay, so if you look at them there, you can see it's pretty much neck and neck. So with the FTZ, because after all, I can't use the 20mm f1.8G on the Z6 without the adapter. So there you go. Now, a couple of things I wanna to talk to you about with the adapter. One of the things that, by the way, the adapter works really well with all of the lenses I've got, particularly the Nikon native lenses I've got, uh, and my Sigma Art Series 35 f1.4, it works fantastic on that as well. I've got a couple of Tamron lenses, which are the G1 series of Tamrons. Doesn't autofocus with those. It does on the G2 and I know there's firmware updates and all sorts of things. So for a lot of lenses, it's fine. And I have not seen any difference in quality by using the adapter, as opposed to using this lens or any of those other lenses on my D750. So I think the adapter works fine. I think it's a great thing to have. It's not overly bulky and heavy by itself, but as those of you know who use adapters, it's just another thing that you need. And that brings me to the reason why I'm looking at replacing a lot of these lenses with native glass, like this 20 mil, 35, 50, etc., because they just fit straight onto the camera. Now this is my primary camera. I use it for all of my nightscapes. I've still got two D750s, and because of that, I've still got a lot of old F-mount uh, F lenses, uh, which I use on those, uh, no worries at all. So I've got two systems here in one, and I can still use all of those lenses, as I've mentioned, on the Z series. So here we go. With the FTZ adapter, one of the other things that I wanna talk about is the actual weight of the lens. Now, to help us out a little bit here, I've actually brought in my kitchen scales. Now have a look at that. I, I don't spend much time in the kitchen, I must admit. Um, I like to eat food, but I don't like cooking food. But the kitchen scales will come in very handy for this test. So here we go. I'm gonna do a weight um, comparison between these two lenses. So here we go. First one is gonna be the, the old uh, G series or the F mount with the FTZ adapter. So let's put it on there. And that comes, oh gee, my eyesight's not real flash here, just under 600 grams. So about 590 or thereabouts. That's best I can see with my eyesight the way it is. Let's put that aside and let's put this one up there and see what that weighs. And actually that's about, oh, it's just on 600. So it's, it's almost neck and neck to be absolutely honest. I can't guarantee my scales are calibrated, but that's what I'm looking at here. It's almost exactly the same. If anything, the new one is just a few grams heavier than the old one, and that is with the FTZ adapter, okay? Just looking again. Yeah, gee, they're neck and neck. They're very, very close. So that's good. So what, why am I doing that? Well, the main reason I did that comparison is because in real terms, this setup is no heavier than this setup. 
because I need the adapter, remember, to operate it on my camera. Without the adapter, this kills it. This is much lighter, but I can't use it without the adapter. Now, just speaking about this FTZ adapter, I use, um, you can see on the bottom of my camera here, I use the Manfrotto quick release plates to uh, attach to my tripods. What I have to do using the adapter is put that onto the tripod foot. You can see there's a foot on the bottom of the adapter here and it's, a, it's got a quarter inch thread and I can therefore I can just screw on a mount like that. No worries. Put that on the camera. Hang on. When I try and put that on the camera, I can't because this plate fouls on the bottom of the cam camera. So I've got to take this mount off, put that aside, get the adapter and the lens on the camera and then put it back on again. That's a real pain if I need to change uh, lenses between the native lenses and these F-mount lenses. So not having to worry about that is fantastic. So I can just leave that where it is and I can change any of these lenses over at my leisure. All right, so we've talked about the size and the weight. What else is there? Well, how's, what's the build quality like? Well, actually it's awesome. And that's one thing I will say about all of these S lenses for the Z mount, they're all built really, really well. They've got beautiful smooth focus rings, which I love. All of them are the same, and this is probably the best of the lot, this 20 mil. I reckon they've put a fair bit of time and effort into the construction and the quality control of this lens, because I really, really like how it feels. Um, the thing that I want to show you is the focusing on these lenses. Now I've talked about this before. I talked about it with my 24 millimeter uh, discussion a little while ago. One thing I don't like about the Z mount native lenses, when you're focusing on the back of the camera, you will see on the screen, there's a white bar that goes from close up to infinity focus. In the dark at nighttime, that white bar is really quite bright. So you're looking into a screen with a bright white bar. I don't like that. Uh, and what I've been doing is just putting my hand over that bar to try and stop it hitting my eyes because I'm trying to focus on really faint stars. As far as the actual focusing goes though, it's, it's pretty good. I have read a lot of things online about these native S lenses refocusing every time you turn them on and off. Now I've done a few tests with this and what they do is actually focus to infinity by default. In other words, when you turn the camera on, the first time you turn the camera on without touching any of the lens adjustments or anything, it's focused to infinity. And I did some testing, and you'll see some pictures in a moment that I shot straight out of the camera by opening it up, not even focusing, and they're sharp. What does that say? Well, what it's saying is that that infinity focus is pretty good. Some of you might say, oh, that can't be true. I don't think that's right. Well, my results, tell me that it's not too bad, especially since I was shooting a lot of the stuff that I shot at f1.8, and you're gonna see that shortly. So yeah, that white line down the bottom, I don't like it, uh, but I can get around that. The actual smooth focusing is beautiful, really nice. You can see that the stars come in and out of focus quite nicely, so I like that. Uh, and of course, as I said, the feel of the focus ring is awesome. Really, really good. Now, one of the big things to consider when looking at these two lenses together is the way that the focusing actually looks to the user. Now, this particular lens has hard stops. You push it one way and then you push it the other. And it has a scale on the front of the lens there showing you whether you're in at the infinity focus end or you're at the, um, the close end. Now, that's sort of what most lenses in the past have had. Whereas this new one, being a completely fly-by-wire system, now you've probably, some of you have never heard of that, pretty much what it means is you can just keep turning that and there's no hard stops. So initially, without any, any um, scale there, you wouldn't have a clue if you're anywhere near focusing. That's why they put the white bar down the bottom of the screen, so you can see which end you're focusing towards. As I've mentioned, I don't like the white bar, but having said that, I've got used to this now, and all of these lenses are the same, and I've found it to be okay. But those of you who don't like fly-by-wire lenses, well, you're gonna to have to get used to that because that's where they're all pretty much going these days. The other thing everyone's gonna ask me is what about coma? Everyone wants to know what coma is like on lenses for nightscape photography or astrophotography. This uh, lens wide open at f1.8 does have coma. There's no getting around that. If you look in the corners of the images, I'm gonna show you some in a minute, you will see 
coma. But I can tell you it's far better than a lot of other lenses that I've used. I'm talking about wide open there at f1.8. If I stop it down a bit, there's virtually nothing. I have no hesitation in using this lens wide open at f1.8, okay? Uh, I think at f2, f2.2, especially at f2.8, there, there's no worries at all about coma and aberrations and anything like that. The other thing about this lens is it is absolutely sharp. It's sharp as a pin. It is awesome. And I can say the same thing about all of the native uh, Z lenses. They're all absolutely awesome. And I can tell you one thing, when you're shooting nightscape images, you really notice the difference between a sharp lens and one that's soft. I've tried plenty of lenses before that are soft and I'm not happy with, uh, but that's not the case with any of these Z lenses. So what I wanna do now is show you some examples and just talk you through some of the images that I've shot here. Uh, I've had a, a few weeks to test this lens, uh, by no means a thorough test because uh, of the current situation that we're in, but it's a pretty good uh, test and you'll see different types of images that I've shot. Some I'll show you single images, some I'll show you stacked and layered light painted images. So let's get onto that now. Looking at this image here, which is the first image that I ever shot with my 20 millimeter f 1.8s this is a stacked image and there's quite a bit of light painting in the foreground i also did some long exposure stack to get this middle ground here to look reasonably sharp as you can see it looks pretty good i mean with the sky uh, there was no stars in the sky the clouds always look noisy like that but when you look at the image like so you can hardly even see the noise and it actually looks pretty good very happy with that shot so I took a trip out to that windmill once again when the stars were showing. And you can see here the Milky Way shining. This is actually a single exposure. You can see the settings over here. It's shot at f1.8, wide open aperture, 15 second shutter speed, ISO 6400. Single exposure, a bit of light painting in the foreground, and it looks pretty good. Now, a lot of people are going to ask me about coma, so I'll just zoom into the corners. And you can see here, yeah, th there is definitely a little bit of coma, but... Yeah, it's not too bad. I mean, that's right in the corner. Let's go to the other corner. That's pretty good. You know, there is some there, so definitely. But uh, obviously less in the center of the frame. And yeah, now what I did whilst I was there, you can see all these exposures down the bottom here. I created a stacked image and I oh, love this one. This is one of my favorite shots that I've ever taken. I just really, really like this image really really sharp i did a foreground stack a long exposure so three of those i blended them together you can see there you can see those hills and the paddocks in the background and then i did some light painting in the foreground here um, and you can see the the windmill which was spinning from a bit of wind uh, looks great and the sky this is a stacked shot as i mentioned to you before a little bit of uh, star minimization as well just to give it that sort of dreamy look which i like but yeah so once again the, the, the all of those stack shots were shot at f1.8 foreground at f5 pretty much the same as i typically shoot and yeah this is this is just a great image full screen just love that shot that is really really awesome so on the same night while i had the opportunity with a good clear night i decided to head over to another windmill now a lot of you would have seen this windmill before because I've used it a few times. Now this image you're looking at here is shot at f, this is a single shot, f2.8, 15 second shutter speed, ISO 6400, various exposure settings there. And when you look at the full screen shot here, it doesn't look too bad. Now I shot another one whilst I was there at f1.8, and that's this one here. Just a little bit different composition, but it's exactly the same shot same settings except this is at one f1.8 and when you look at this one full screen that that's not a bad image for a single exposure so you'd have to be happy with that but of course i wasn't happy i had to do stacking for noise reduction and you can see down here the 10 sky layers i've done these are shot at f1.8 10 second shutter speed at iso 6400 that's a single shot once again just zooming into the corner you can see well, the coma, it's, it's there, but it's not too bad. A little bit there on that bright star, but it's really not too bad. There's a lot of noise in this image, but this hasn't been noise reduced yet. There's no noise reduction on that. 
So that's pretty good. So now if we go into uh, the final image with all that stacking and light painting, this is how it came up. And I think this is just beautiful. I mean, that, that is a magic, dreamy shot. And just look at this, how sharp the foreground is. This is the advantage of having a sharp lens and then stopping down the aperture. It makes a huge, huge difference to the quality of your images. So, um, same night, I moved on to another uh, spot to shoot. Now, this is an old tank that I'd shot at before. You can see it's an old water tank, that, uh, well, an old gold mining boiler, I think, that's been converted into a water tank. Once again, this is a single exposure, shot at f 1.8, 10, 10 second shutter speed at 6400 ISO. It's not too bad. I'll show you the full screen image. Um, and that's just a single exposure. It's only 10 seconds shot at f1.8. Now, if you look closely on this image though, you'll notice that the foreground's out of focus. It's not sharp in the foreground, even though it's focused to infinity, the stars are okay, but the foreground's not sharp. I also shot it at f2.8, and you can see there, this is a 15 second shutter speed ISO 6400. You can see here, when you zoom in, it's a little more in focus in the foreground. So obviously stopping down the lens a bit adds to the uh, depth of field, but, and I'll show you the full screen of that one, that, that's not a bad image either. Um, it's f2.8. So beautiful detail here in the Milky Way in the sky. It looks pretty good, pretty happy with that. But of course, I did my stacking again. You can see the shots down the bottom here. I did 10 of these, stacking for noise reduction. And uh, th these are shot at f2.8. Um, ISO 6400, 10 second shutter speed. Just zooming into the corner, you can see now the, cor the corner is pretty sharp. I mean, there's a tiny little bit of coma. This is, remember, at f2.8. Little bit there. Don't worry about the noise because these haven't had any noise reduction applied to them at all. I'll just move to the other side. Um, and once again, yeah, there, there's a bit of coma, but gee, it's not bad. A lot of lenses I've used have been a lot worse than that, I can tell you. So the final end result of that image is down here. So there's, let me see, one, two, three, four, there's five foreground exposures. You can see here, I've stopped down to F5, 15 seconds at ISO 500. And what that does, it makes the image really, really sharp. Look how sharp that is compared to that other one. A few different exposures there. You can see light painted. Um, there's me in there and there's the the light painted shot, once again, beautiful and sharp. Blend it all together, this is what it looks like. Isn't that just beautiful? Full screen, and there you can see. So that's 10 shots for the background sky, shot at f2.8, and four or five shots for the foreground, shot at f5 with a lower ISO. You end up with a shot like that. That could be printed really, really large as a, as a print and look absolutely fantastic. All right, let's move on to my next shot. This was a good night. I really enjoyed this. Um, what have I got here? Okay, this is a single exposure. This tree, you may have seen before I've shot this tree before. This is shot at f1.8, 15 second shutter speed, ISO 6400. Looks good. Oh, then I shot 10 images here. Same thing for noise reduction. These are back to f1.8, you can see up here. So these are at f1.8. Um, then I did couple of foreground shots just to light paint the tree you can see here so these are shot at f uh, f5 15 seconds at iso 800 you can see i've lit, lit the tree a bit of the grass in the foreground and the fence line blend it together this is the final result and once again this is a magical image absolutely love what i've got with this lens everything is just so sharp so it's gorgeous all right, now, that's not the end of it. Um, I had one more opportunity with this lens, so let's go and have a look at that now. Um, we're gonna start here. This is a single shot over a lake with the dead trees in the, in the lake. Milky Way rising over the, the hill here. This is shot at f2.2, 15 second shutter speed, ISO 6400. Once again, Bit of coma, but this is, remember, stop down a little bit to f2.2, so it's not too bad. Go to the corner on the other side. It's pretty good, pretty good. And of course, the overall image. Now, what I did here, again, I stacked a heap of shots for noise reduction. You can see them here. 
at f2.2, 6400 ISO, 10 second shutter speed. Okay, so these ones, if you look in the corner, just a little bit of a hint of coma, but gee, not much. It's pretty good, pretty good. I'll go to this corner again, and not bad at all. Not too bad. And of course, that's the center of the frame. Now, remember, there's no noise reduction applied to these yet. Then I did three images here. These are extremely long exposures. You can tell by the star trails that are produced. And the reason for that is I just wanted to capture the foreground. So the water here, these are, let me have a look, 148 seconds, f2.8 at ISO 2500. Little bit of adjustments here. And I, the reason I did that was to get, to stack these three to take the noise out of the foreground. And of course, when you look at the final result, this is all of that blended together, full screen. Absolutely love this shot. Look at that Milky Way, isn't it just gorgeous? So this is the advantage of stacking images. You get so much more detail in both the sky and look at that water. That just looks great. All right, so that's the first shot I took whilst I was there, move on. Um, oh, I, then I did a panorama. Now, I didn't have a lot of time for this because the wind was getting up and it was a bit difficult, but you can see I've stacked 21 images down here. And I'll just quickly show you a couple of them. The clouds rolled through a little bit, so that made it awkward. Um, so there's there's two rows, I think. Oh, no, hang on, there's three rows, I'm sorry. Three rows of seven to make that 21. And this is the final image that I got. Now, I did crop this a little bit, but even so, doesn't look too bad. So that's a 21 shot panorama three rows of seven. Uh, the settings I used were, let me have a look, f2.8, 15 seconds at ISO 6400. So when I'm shooting my panoramas, I'll generally be shooting similarly to single shots and I'm just stacking a whole stack of them together. Okay, let's move on to the next image I shot whilst I was there. Now this is a single exposure. Looks pretty good for a single exposure. F1.8, so this is wide open at F1.8, 15 second shutter speed at ISO 6400. And full screen, there you go. There's, there's what a single exposure looks like at F1.8. All right, again, I did some stacking for noise reduction. Just wanna show you the difference between these images. So that's the stacked image with all the various, uh, a few light painted foreground shots which of course look fantastic because look at the detail in this tree and the foreground there. Isn't that just gorgeous? And then you've got the sky. I mean, that is amazing. Love this shot. So again, this is stacked for noise reduction and light painted foreground. The other one, a little bit of light painting in the foreground, but it was just a single shot. Um, just for your benefit, by the way, um, I will compare those two for you. Just give me one moment. Okay, so there you go. You can compare the two. The shot on the left is stacked and light painted. The shot on the right is a single image with just a little bit of light painting, obviously as much as I could do in, in a single exposure. So the one on, on this side is obviously more uh, detailed and less noise. You can see the noise here, the, the tree doesn't have the amount of detail, but even so, it's not bad for a single shot. And that's a good way to compare the images just like that. Okay, so let's move on to the next one. Uh, what I wanna do now is show you, uh, what have we got here? Here's another single exposure. 15 seconds, F1.8, ISO 6400. Once again, not a bad image. Gee, you don't, you, you, you wouldn't want too much more than that to be absolutely honest with you. That is an awesome shot for a single exposure. Remember, this is wide open at F1.8. Fantastic. Now I had opportunity to shoot one more image here. So I'll show you that now. Once again, this is a single exposure at F2.2 this time. So once again, I've stopped down a little bit, 15 seconds at ISO 6400. And when you look at the uh, complete image there, full screen, not bad, is it? Now, a little touch of light painting here, but most of this I've brought out the shadows in Lightroom to get this to look like that. Uh, so this is just edited in Lightroom, nothing else. Uh, the lake in the background looks pretty good, but I did of course go a bit further than that. I did stacking for this one. So the single shots, 
f2.2 10 second shutter speed iso 6400 then i did some light painting images at f5 at iso 800 just for the foreground here you can see what i've done there a little bit of light painting on the tree and so when you look at the final result this is magic this is absolutely beautiful i love this shot and there you have it so from what I'm showing you, this lens is an absolutely beautiful performer, even wide open, but especially when you stack it for noise reduction and you stop down just a little bit, you get beautiful detail. So as you can see, this lens is an absolute stellar performer and I love it. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention before, when you buy these new S-mount lenses for the Z series uh, cameras, you get this awesome little uh, lens pouch. So it's a fabric bag with the Nikkor uh, logo, but they are really good little bags. And I think you can just throw them in there, place it in your camera bag, and you've got that extra level of protection from dust and the elements, which I think is a great idea. All right, so my final thoughts, this lens is awesome. It has taken over from this one as my favorite lens for nightscape images. Love the 20 millimeter focal length, love the build quality and the, the ruggedness of the lens. It's, it's solid, but not too heavy. Awesome focus ring, really, really easy to negotiate. Um, everything about the lens is simple. It's just got one dial there. There's nothing complicated about it. And it's the same with all of these lenses. They are really, really good. So. I'd always be happy to chat with you in the comments down below because I know a lot of you will be asking questions perhaps beyond what I've mentioned here today as well as that I know some of you may even have this lens I'll be really interested in your take on the things that we've talked about so until I see you again I'll look forward to that whenever that may be and I hope you have an absolutely awesome week see you later